Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we come now and we give ourselves to you. Take us, Lord, and let your Holy Spirit just have its way and its will in us so that your name will be magnified, your name will be glorified. Fill us now and even touch us now and touch me now in a very special way so that th today we will say, yes, it was good when we, they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. God is a good God. Yes. God is a wonderful God. And I'm pretty sure that we all could um, share in a testimony of David. And when we look at the testimony of David in the 46th division of the Psalm, he opens out by saying, The Lord is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. God is our refuge. Refuge, a condition of safety and shelter in the pursuit of danger and trouble. So therefore, God is our protector. Mm -hmm. And God is not just our protector, and when he is protecting us, we go hungry. Mm -hmm. For while he is our protector, at the same time, he is our provider. Yes. And David says that not only does he protect and provide, but he's our source of strength. And just in case, while he is protecting, and while he is providing, and while he is redeeming, and while he is saving, just in case we come about some obstacle in, the obstacles in life, and we find ourselves in time of trouble, he is our very present help in time of trouble. To be present does not mean to just be around. But to be present means uh, 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 an immediate sense of being there when you are needed. I looked out my window the other day and I saw a little boy walking up the sidewalk. He probably was about three years. But he wasn't by himself because a few steps behind him, I saw a man whom I think must have been, who I thought must have been his father. And so the boy reached by in front where I live in the driveway. A cat came out from the driveway, head into the direction of where the boy was walking towards to. And it seems as though the child was shocked. He stood up. And it seems as though the cat was shocked. <laughs> and they both stood up and they looked at each other. And then I saw the boy look back. And his father hurriedly came and held his hand. When the father held the boy's hand, then the boy began to try to attack the cat. <laughs> because holding the father's hand now gave him a source of strength and confidence. For God is not our, just our refuge, but he's also our strength, refuge and strength. Yeah. And the boy, when I look at the situation and when I look at the text, the father was not present. The father was around. Because if the cat could have already attacked the boy before the father came to the boy's rescue, because there was a distance in steps, and when there is a distance in steps, there is a distance in time. He would have taken the father a few steps, and by taking that few steps, he would have had to spend about at least 15 seconds to get to the child. The Bible says that God is not around, but God is present. When one is present, there is no distance with steps, so there is no distance in time. He is present. What a wonderful God. He is our refuge Amen. and strength. A very present help. When trouble comes, I know the chorus say, call direct, he will accept. 
When trouble comes, the Bible is telling me that we don't even have to call. He's there. That is why it is so important that we establish a relationship with God. Because brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that our bodies are the temple of the living God. And the Holy Spirit does not dwell around us. Angels dwell around us to protect us, but the Spirit of God dwells in us. And when the Spirit of God dwells in us, it means that God's presence is always there in us, with us, and for us. And so I like the way the psalmist David described it in the 23rd division of the psalm. If you will turn to me, and I know that it is well known, but if you will just let us revisit the scripture reading, and we will see what it says. The 23rd division of the psalm. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And to help us understand or get a better understanding of what the passage is saying, Julian will join me. Julian will represent us. All right. Julian will represent us. He says that he leadeth me, he, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Pastor, join me, please. Julian, just stand right here. Pastor is representing God, rightfully so. <laughs> Pastor, stand right in front of Julian. Stand in front of Julian. God does what? He's leading us. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Sis, rod. Stand to Julian's right. God is leading. God is comforting with his rod. The shepherd used the rod to protect the sheep. Any wild animal attacking the sheep will have a taste of the rod. But not just the rod, the rod and thy staff. Come, my Vinci lady. Come. Stand to Julian's left. The rod protects the staff, the shepherd. If you know the, 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 the staff, the, the staff is something that has a hook to the end of it, that long looking rod, but it's different to the rod because it has a hook. The shepherd used this to hold the sheep when the sheep is going astray. He takes that hook and he guides. So God is guiding and disciplining at the same time Julian while he leads Jill, Julian. And then look at what it takes as it continues. He says, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy. Elder, join me. Goodness. Where is goodness? It following says so behind Julian. And mercy. Elder, join me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Is Julian protected? Yes. What a loving God. Amen. And that is not on an occasional basis, but that is on a daily, moment by moment basis. So when the Bible tells us that he is our very present help in time of trouble, we must know what he's talking about. That's not it. They go back. 
And let us see, he says, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. Right now, Julian is in his humanity. Not yet touched with divinity, but God is protecting him anyhow. But the psalmist David says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. There is something that takes hold of the body. When God's spirit dwells in us. Yeah. Julian, with the permission of your parents, he anoints. He anoints my head with oil. Put this robe on, Julian. He anoints my head with oil, and because he anoints my head with oil. Are you seeing Julian? Yes. If you could only come to the point where you will touch Julian. Pastor, don't, without stepping on him, come back as much as you could touch Julian. <laughs> Is Julian protected? Yes. Not just protected. But in the image and likeness of God, because he is covered and anointed with the Spirit of God, his body now is not his body, but that mind which was in Christ Jesus is now in him because on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. He is in the presence of God, and not only he is in the presence of God, but God's presence is in him. Amen. So now when Julian walks, Julian walks in the footsteps of God. When Julian talks, he talks of God. The, the mouth that comes from his lips are, my, are words that will be praising God. Amen. 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 What a mighty. And in that position, as we look at Julian, let us go back to the 46th division of the psalm. Let's go back as we look at the 46th division of the psalm. Verse 2. Therefore will, will, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Why should Julian be afraid? When we have that relationship with God, I don't even see Julian. Any one of us now try to attack Julian. You cannot attack him from behind his goodness and mercy. You cannot attack him from the left. He has the staff of God. You cannot attack him from the right. He has the rod of God. You cannot attack him from in front. He has God himself leading him. Therefore, he said, though the mountains be removed in the sea, why should we fear? Why should we be afraid? The third verse. Though the waters thereof roll and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, why should we be afraid? Though Donald Trump and Kim Jong Young or Young have nuclear warfare. Why should we be afraid? Our lives are not in their hands. Our lives are in the hand of God. What a merciful God. And there are sometimes we ask ourselves the question what is there to praise God for? The very fact that we have life mm -hmm. is more than enough to give God thanks and praise. Amen. Because God is always there to protect us. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Jillian, you can be robed. But then, 
I like 23rd division of the psalm. And I like the fourth verse. He say, Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Peter Julian, as he was protected, and we had looked at the 46th division of the Psalm 2 and 3, and it says, ask the question, why should we be afraid? We should have no fear. Therefore, when we are like Julian, as we saw Julian, and death should take hold of us, we have nothing to be worried about. When we live in the presence of God, and we die in his presence, with his presence, his presence in us. The Bible is telling us that we are in the valley of the shadow of death. We are not, I wanted to bring a light to show us, but I felt it was too much because I'll have to block this window and block that window. But in order for us to get a shadow, there must be light. When there is no light, there is only darkness, you cannot get a shadow. So the Bible is telling us that even though we walk in the, as, as much as we walk in the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because when we have a relationship with God and death takes hold of us, it is not a death that is going to destroy us forever because all that to hold of us is just the shadow of death. But then, it could have only been a shadow in the presence of a light. Jesus Christ is the son of righteousness. I know you could spell it S-O-N of righteousness, but for the application of this message, he is not just S-O-N of righteousness, but he is also S-U-N of righteousness. So that death in the presence of God, death, when his boy or his girl, his son or his daughter dies, they only experience the shadow. And because we experience the shadow, then brothers and sisters, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 4 and verse 16 becomes a reality. For one day, the clouds shall roll back as a scroll. And God himself will descend from heaven oh, with a shout, oh, the, the voice of God and with a trump, with, with, with the sound of God and with the voice of the archangel. And the Bible tells us that the dead in Christ shall rise fast. Yes. And brothers and sisters, understand that we can die in the shadow of death or we could die not protected from death and die in the full sting of death. When we die in the shadow of death, there is the first resurrection. When we die not protected as we realize and as we saw Julian, when we die outside of Christ, we do not experience dying in the shadow of death, but we die in the full sting of death, which is the second death. And those, there is a benefit. There is a benefit to those who die in the shadow of death. And brothers and sisters, we have to thank God for the, for, for, for the power of the resurrection. Yes. Because this week we funeralize one of us. And yet even though we funeralize him, yet we are to thank God for his plan of salvation that though we die, yet still in our flesh, we shall see God. Amen. Because when you have that relationship that Elder Johnson had with God, you do not just die, but you die in the shadow yes. of this. And oh, what a practicality. You will turn with me to the last book of the Bible. 
Revelation chapter 21. Talking about dying in the shadow of death. I'm not talking about the death of everyone. I'm talking about those that die in the shadow. Those that die in the shadow. In other words, those that have a relationship with God. The benefit of dying in the shadow. The benefit of having a relationship with God while we are alive. It says here, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there were no more sea. Can't wait for that first heaven. This, first, this, this earth and this heaven is so polluted. Yes. It is so corrupted. There was a news sometime last month, or early this month. It says that the metro, the trains that run in the metro area, they will normally have a greeting for the people, the passengers in the morning. And the greetings will be, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. They're now going to remove this greeting because they do not want to identify anyone by gender. So no more ladies and gentlemen. Because the man who is the wife of another man does not consider himself to be a gentleman. Neither does he consider himself to be a lady. So he does not know who he is, and I don't even know who he is. And the woman who is the husband of another woman don't consider herself to be a gentleman. Neither does she consider herself to be a lady. So now this whole greeting that lasted for all this length of time, over all these years, will now be removed because the world is confused. Man don't know if he's man. Woman don't know if she's woman. Bible say all these things will be passed away. And there will be no more sea. Sea meaning separation. Went to Grenada two weeks ago. But three weeks ago I came back and I feel homesick. Because I miss my little environment. Bible said there will be no more sea. For it will be one in unity. No land across the sea. You don't have to fly across the sea from one place to the other. We'll be in the presence of God. And then it continued. And verse 3 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and will dwell with them. And they shall be his people and God himself shall wipe the God himself shall be with them and be their God in the presence of God. What an honor it is to be in the presence of God. But the beautiful thing about it, in verse 4, and it says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. We wouldn't have any more tear glands because we have no use for tears. No more tears. It says, uh, and there shall be no more death. That's a nice one. In other words, no more funeral homes. No more gravesides. And no more caskets. No more undertakers. Because there will be no more death. I was listening to a song last night and it says, so long, bye-bye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye to all the hospitals, Kings County and Downstate. So long, bye-bye because there will be no more sickness. There will be no more pain, no more uh, Tylenol and no more muffin and muttering and no more caffeinol and fensic, no more pain. For all these things shall be passed away. What a loving God. What a beautiful God. 
that while we go through here a life of trials and tribulation, <coughs> God has gone to prepare a place for us. And even though we know, yes, he gone to prepare a place for us, there are sometimes we have our struggles in walking with him, in giving ourselves completely to him. The best way to serve God and the best way to give ourselves on a daily basis to God is to praise him on a daily basis. Amen. Moment by moment, we have to praise God. We cannot just wait for the big things to praise him. But the very fact that we get up on a morning, let us give him praise and thanks. Because he is our very present help in time of trouble. And when there is no trouble, the reason why there is no trouble is because he is present. So whether there is trouble or whether there is no trouble, we must always praise him. Amen. Give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. There was a man who lived in a village. And he had a guard dog, which was a pit bull. And the pit bull will guard his property, fence property. Across the street, there was another family with a little chihuahua, little dog. And somehow the chihuahua will find its way below the gate of the other man's property. And every time the chihuahua goes below the gate, the pit bull will hold him and shake him. The whole pit bull will give him a good shaking. The pit bull could have killed him if it wanted to. But somehow, could tell I've just been nasal. Give me a second. The pit bull could have destroyed him. But somehow the pit bull will just hold him and shake him. To the amazement of the owner of the house, after a few days, after the chihuahua recovers from the wound, lashed out or lashed out on, on, on him by the pit bull, the, the little chihuahua still comes below the gate. And that pit bull will hold him and shake him and shake him and somehow it does not kill him and it will just toss him to the ground and the little chihuahua will take its painful body, <laughs> crawl under the fence and go again. And the owner was wondering why is that little chihuahua so, so, so determined. But one day the man came from visiting town and as he drive through the gate, he realized his people did not come and greet him. Because everything that comes to the gate will be examined by the people. And the people didn't stand on its hind leg and put its foreleg on the glass. And then as the man entered into the yard, he saw the chihuahua sitting down on the porch, <laughs> looking at him. <laughs> In going and look for the pit bull, he saw that one of the legs of the pit bull was severely damaged. The little chihuahua, every time it came, it held the same spot of the pit bull. And after holding it with all the might for so many times, that leg was almost dropped off, just held on by a little of the bone and the skin. And it was so damaged that the, pit, that the chihuahua came and the pit bull just didn't have the strength <laughs> to stand up and attack that chihuahua. Brothers and sisters, you and I, we are like that chihuahua. <laughs> On a daily basis, we are attacked by the devil. But every time we praise God amidst our, amidst our adversities of life, 
amidst the suffering of life, amidst the pain in life, every time we praise God is a wound to the devil. Yeah. That is why James says, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Brothers and sisters, the way to resist the devil is to praise God. Regardless of the difficulties that we go through in life, let us, we can still damage the devil when he brings those critical and those painful and those hurtful and those frustrating moments to us. We can still defeat him by praising God. Amen. And one day, not too long from now, the clouds shall be rolled back as a scroll. And if faithful, we will meet him in the air. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.